Hi there, Creek Stewart here with Willow Haven Outdoor, and it is a very rainy afternoon today. And actually had a big maple branch split off and fall behind the house this morning. And uh, rather than just cut that up and burn it here in the fireplace, I thought I would show you how to cut out a section and carve a wood spoon, which is a really fun rainy afternoon project. Um, the first thing that I did here was I took my axe. Um, I'm using a 19 inch Wetterlings and I split the section in half and the only tools that I'll be using for this project are for major shaping I'll be using the Wetterlings axe and then for some fine tuning I'll be using my 840 MG Mora knife and then for actually carving out the spoon portion of the spoon I'll be using a Mora hook knife. Uh, which you can see here. Um, the first step to actually doing this spoon process is I'm just going to use one half of this split piece and I'm just going to roughly draw a, using a sharpie marker I'm just going to roughly draw the shape of the spoon that I am wanting to carve and nothing real fancy here I'm just trying to get a rough shape here. So as you can see, X marks the spoon and then I'm going to actually carve out kind of a more wide handle if you will. And I'm going to use the axe to actually do a lot of that major shaping. And I'm going to start shaping primarily with the handle. So I'm just taking off the big chunks with the axe here. When I'm shaping the spoon, I like to always do most of my shaping down the handle versus toward the actual spoon part because what that what's going to end up happening if you do your shaping toward the spoon is you're eventually going to slide off and split off a section of that spoon which you do not want to happen so when you're using the axe for rough cutting you always want to go down the handle toward the end of the handle versus toward the spoon portion. So you can see here that I'm making some progress uh, with the spoon. I'm staying pretty much on my Sharpie outline there. Uh, just rough cutting with the Wetterlings axe and we'll, uh, we'll trim it up a little more. When I make spoons, I always rough cut almost the entire spoon with the axe. You know, I've heard people say from time to time that axes are only meant for chopping large pieces of wood, chopping down trees, using for firewood, and that you can't use it for detail work such as carving a spoon. Well, I am certainly of the school of thought that disagrees and would say that a person who says that has never used a top quality axe and one that's able to maintain such a sharp bite and such a sharp blade. Okay, so I've reached the point where I'm ready to set the axe aside and start doing some a little bit more fine detail shaping with my Mora knife. Let me show you what this spoon looks like at this stage so that if you go to do your own, you kind of know about when to stop working with the axe and start working with the knife. Um, I've done almost all of the handle. This is about as thick as my handle is going to be. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm really going to start to shape the bowl of this spoon and I'm going to start to really thin out the neck of the spoon that leads into the handle and then we'll do pretty much all of the fine detail work on the spoon, the shape, the weight itself before we start digging into the bowl. One thing that I always do with the spoons I carve 
and I want to show you is I do what's called rolling my knife, okay? And to really shape out the bottom bowl of that spoon, I roll my knife in a kind of a curling motion at the base of that spoon, away from the bowl and down the handle. Because if you go this way right here, if you go this way right here, it tends to splinter up and get much bigger chunks of wood than you really want. I mean, just with what I did just there could be a devastating miscarve on your spoon. Now at this stage in the carving game, uh, we have two options to carve out the bowl of this spoon. Um, I, could, I haven't always had a hook knife and I've carved many spoons in my life without a hook knife. I could just as easily reach into my fireplace down here, pull out a couple of coals, set them right on the bowl of this, right on the top of the bowl of this spoon, and blow those, and they will slowly, slowly burn away a cavity in the bowl of this spoon. And you can take your regular knife and scratch those out from time to time, put new coals in, and keep doing that. It's called coal burning, coal burning wood, you could keep doing that until you burn out a cavity in the bowl of this spoon. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to use my hook knife, which is basically a Mora knife shaped, if you've never seen one, it's basically a Mora knife bent, shaped like a hook. They're just like all Moras. They're not that expensive. This one's probably only I don't know, 18, 20 bucks or so. And if you get into spoon carving, it's a worthy investment. And I'm going to go through the whole bowl of this spoon, similar to how I was doing before. I'm just going to do nice, slow carves, just digging out the bowl of that spoon. You can see how well this hook knife gouges out the inside of that spoon. Well, I've pretty much just finished up my spoon project for the day. I just finished doing some light sanding. I wiped on a few layers of mineral oil to treat the wood. This was green wood. This was green wood. This had just fallen in my yard today, and so this wood definitely will do some drying out over the course of the next few weeks. So I will want to treat this wood with some type of oil, linseed oil. I use mineral oil today um, just to keep this wood nice and moist and treated while it's going through that breaking in process. Let me show you up close. It's just amazing to think that earlier today I took a limb that had fallen out of a tree in my yard I cut it up and I could have easily just thrown it over the over the ravine into the woods or I could have burned it but instead I turned it into a beautiful spoon that can be functional I can use it here at the house I can take it with me on camping trips and use it there uh, but I'll definitely use it for years to come and it's something that only took me probably two or you know under two hours the hour hour and a half at the max and um, and I've got another half here for for another day I went ahead and put a put a hole in the handle and put a lanyard so that I could hang this on my wall in the kitchen and the silver lining to this whole story is now I have a lot of kindling for the next time I want to make a fire if you have any questions about some of the steps I did while carving this spoon uh, Feel free to leave comments, feel free to leave posts, questions, comments, etc. And I appreciate your views.